Richard, see you there. Long time no see. Welcome back to another episode of Reviving an Idler. And welcome also, my new son. We've had an exceptionally busy time over the last couple of months, not least because of uh, the little guy here. And I'd like to interject at this point a massive thank you in particular to my mum, who has been doing so much hard work looking after uh, the family, looking after uh, me as well, whilst I attempt to look after them. <laughs> um, but we all know mum knows best and mum is doing a wonderful, wonderful job. So I can't thank her enough for her efforts and, uh, and all the love and care that she's putting into the family at the moment. So massive, massive thank you to you mum. Um, on the project itself, we have been ticking along with some of the work in Idler. Um, however, we've been forced to divert into efforts on the second haven um, due to unforeseen circumstances. Unfortunately, my brother's not been able to do quite as much as he'd hoped. Um, so we've been doing quite a lot of work down on uh, the second haven. So in between feeds, we have been doing uh, little bits and bobs on Idler, such as redoing the framing. Uh, we're still doing plank repair pluggings, etc. We've removed the entire deck um, structure from the, the boat in, in its entirety, and we've reframed up the, the inside. So we've got essentially hard points to brace everything up. Um, and we've also been doing a, a lot of work on the dinghy and also little bits and bobs such as sorting out reefing gear on the booms for the second haven. We've also been making a new rudder uh, for her. Um, all kinds of, sort of smaller jobs that we can get stuck into um, sort of an hour here and there. And on to bigger things, well I'm very pleased to say that we managed to get the log uh, from the churchyard so that's absolutely fantastic, so that is on its way to the lumber yard as we speak. Um, so hoping to get some nice long boards out of that that we can try and get some of the, the larger strakes done. Uh, and anything else that we can use out of it such as the decking, that's what I'm hoping to use as well because it would be lovely to be able to say we're walking on home, you know the deck is, is made from home so that would be quite fun too. Outside of that, the, this episode is going to largely be a collaboration, a sort of a mishmash of bits and bobs that have been put together over the last little while. <laughs> and um, just to keep you updated and just to let you know that we are still here and we are still progressing with the project. Um, so without me wittering at the camera any longer, I'm going to send you back to me from a couple of months ago, who's going to uh, take over the rest of this episode.
Well, it's that time again where I get to draw you really dodgy pictures on bits of rubbish. What I'm doing right now is beginning to remove the keel bolt from this floor, um, just so I can start dry fitting the, the one that we've just been shaping. Right, where was I? Sorry, we had a little bit of camera trouble earlier on, so um, we have to come back later on this evening and uh, readdress what we were talking about there. So I think I was about to go ahead and draw you some scribbled ramblings uh, to do with the keel bolts. So we have a floor looking something like that, and through it runs a bolt like so. That travels down through the wooden keel and the ballast keel below it. Three sections. Okay. Now the most likely location for corrosion is going to be sort of in this wooden section here, because you're going to get the acids and the sort of galvanic action um, through immersion in seawater acting on the the steel and the iron down there. So the most likely place is going to be in this sort of section here, and what that's going to do is it's going to weaken and thin the actual bolt itself in a sort of a section like this, thinning down, sorry about that light, thinning down the walls. Now I have to be careful here um, in removing the nut and trying to get as many clues as possible about the condition of the bolt because if it is heavily corroded, like so, um, and I start hammering on down on top of it, I can very easily sever uh, that thin bit of material there and drive what's essentially then a wedge past the other wedge, okay, driving them down past each other. If they were attached, they've been broken and drive them past each other. And that's going to exert force outwards into the actual wooden keel and, and lock itself in there. And there's absolutely no way I'm going to be able to shift it if that's the case. So I have to be very, very careful in what I'm doing so we don't end up with a wedge driven past uh, another wedge, sort of like that there. So any clues I can get to the condition of the bolt I want to, to use. So I'm going to do my best to cut the nut off here and then I'm going to be looking at the top of that bolt then I'm going to scratch away and uh, knock out the back of the actual floor here so I can see the condition of the bolt as it gets through the floor um, and then hopefully everything's looking quite happy and good and I'm going to start knocking it through the bottom of the bolt. So that's the, the plan. Well, after much bumping, chapping and chipping, we've managed to get the keel bolt revealed and the floor out. Um, you can see the little bronze bolt sticking up there at the side. That runs through the wooden keel and secures the floor to the actual wooden keel. But the big guy in the middle there, that's our iron keel bolt. Um, so far, uh, apart from sort of quite thick surface rust, I think it's feeling kind of sturdy. We're getting a good chap. So see what I mean, I'll give this a good thump and you can hear what I sound, it gives you a good solid sound, it doesn't, uh, it's not too muffled. It's a nice sharp click. So as you can hear there's a nice sharp click, a nice solid um, ring that's not dull and muffled. Um, so that tells me that the keel bolt is most likely intact, um, albeit heavily corroded. And there's a good uh, thick layer of surface corrosion on there which I was able to chip off. Um, you know that's that's about the thickness we're talking there. So I mean that's that's a good, what four mil ballpark, so uh, two two eighths or something like that um, of corrosion on the outside. Um, so it's going to be significantly thinned, but I'm hopeful that I can give us a good couple of solid thumps and get it moving. However, it's a bit too late to uh, keep whacking away with hammers uh, tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pile some oil onto there, some penetrating oil, like a WD-40 or something, and just let that soak in and soak through, and we'll uh, have a look at that again in the morning. Well, it's out. 
come out and as you can see fair bit of corrosion there but it's out just give you a wee once over at this cool bolt here as you can see this incredible thinning right here where it would have gone through the wooden keel and that's quite typical this bit here if it was in contact with the iron wait, it's brand new you'd never know if you knock that out a little bit and have a look at the bottom you'd be thinking that was fine nothing wrong with it put it back in but here it's actually very greasy slimy and very heavily corroded in there You wouldn't have thought there was very much else to do demolition on, but yeah, we've been smashing out that and removing the forward deck beams and the main deck beams across it. The main station frames are all braced up with these bits of wood, onto which I'm going to mark a center line, uh, measuring a uh, gunnel to gunnel across, find the center point of the bit of wood. Uh, mark that there and then I'm going to shine a laser down the centre line of the boat and just see how closely it uh, relates to the uh, the true centre of the boat. If I need to uh, chalk up one side or the other or release a chalk or something to try and twist the hull about um, I could do that now before I start to remove the uh, beam shelves here uh, so I can start easily fairing in these sawn frames. You can just see the green light under that forward beam. Give it a woggle. See it flashing there? So she's still surprisingly straight. She still has that lean out over to, uh, to port there, which we knew about, but um, she's not too far gone at this stage. Um, I'm not even going to try and fix that to be honest, um, I'll just try and remember it and uh, roll with it, build it into the rest of the boat. So with that done, it's about time we start uh, fairing out and shaping up this sawn frame. To do that, I'm going to take the old frame as a template, bolt the two pieces together and make some marks across so I have places to uh, translate the bevel edge across. As we already know, my bandsaw is not powerful enough to cut through this, so I am going to have to do it all by hand. Slow, time consuming, um, and not exactly the most comfortable way of doing things. Uh, however, it's all I can do. I simply can't afford a bigger bandsaw, so we'll just have to uh, needs must on this one. However, working with hand tools is not such a bad thing. It's always uh, good to practice your skills, get your hand-eye coordination all uh, honed and squared away. And it makes for a far more pleasant working environment as well. You don't have to be all uh, gas masked up and uh, your defenders and all the rest of it. You can just quite happily have the tunes on in the background. So. so the aim of the game in here is I'm translating marks across. Now I've already done that uh, in pencil, so I've got something to actually cut out a, a loose blank um, from the, the, the larger blank. Um, but what I want to try and do is translate this bevel across. I'm going to do that with a sliding bevel like this. Obviously if I pop this on and translated that bevel straight across from there by planing that down, 
essentially what I'm going to be doing is creating the frame next to this one. I'll be translating the bevel edge and extending it forward. So if you imagine the bow is that way, stern is that way. By bringing that line across, we've essentially created this frame which would be sitting in front of that one. And that's not what I want to do. I want to build this frame where that one is in the boat, if that makes sense to you. So if I mark it out, separate the two pieces, take that bevel edge, move it across to here, cut that angle, work my way down so I've got a visual reference and then I can move across the whole thing with either a power planer or um, the angle grinder with the sanding discs uh, just to speed up the process a little bit. But I need a visual mark to work to uh, and that's the purpose of this. And as you can see in the background there, we still have an Agatha. She's uh, still undergoing a little bit of a winter refit. There's a video coming out shortly that's going to cover uh, pretty much everything I've done on her uh, during this little winter period. we got going on here? We are setting up for the installation of these sawn frames here. Never mind the steamer up there, that's for a little project we're fixing down the other end. And as you can see, we've been bracing up the hull all the way along, removing the entirety of the deck structure. And the reason behind that was so we can actually get these uh, beam shelves loosened off to allow us to slide uh, the sawn frames in so we can get them positioned more easily without deforming the hull as we're positioning them. So I've roughly sawn out these two sawn frames, taking the templates from the original frames that I re removed and I managed to take them out in one solid piece so that was great, I was able to use them as a pretty solid template. Uh, initially I took the dimensions straight off the frame, uh, the bevel edges straight off the frame and transferred them to this, um, however for whatever reason the Bermudan factor of this end of the hull, uh, that hasn't quite worked. Um, there is a bit of bowing in the frame that I was removed, so I think that bowing has actually not translated well across to there, as it wouldn't. Um, so we're pretty close as we are, so I've clamped them all up and used some nice hard flat boards uh, clamping to the frame in three locations, right down by the keel, across the middle section and uh, across this upper region here. And that means that my frame is effectively one hard flat board in position where it should be. And then I can uh, use the, the old pencil and block technique to mark out the front and the uh, back sides of each frame. And then I can use those as uh, my templates for my bevels and then just shave it down again to match that. Then we give the whole thing a bit of a clean up and a plane and just get it all looking pretty. And uh, that's it. Stick it in, whack some nails through it. So that's the plan. Hopefully get this done in the next day or two. Fingers crossed. No more baby interruptions.
is looking pretty cool. They're pretty close to where they need to be. So I think I'll just take them out and get the planes back involved and just flatten out any high spots. And that should be pretty close to final fairing. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this rather unfocused episode. Um, it's great to have you with you and I'm glad I was able to share some of the progress in various things. Obviously, keep your eyes out for the uh, video coming shortly to do with the uh, winter refit of the Ant Agatha there. Anyway, it's a huge thank you from me for all your help and support over the uh, over the last year and a bit now of, uh, of the project. Greatly appreciated. You patrons out there, you uh, keep the world going. Thank you so, so much from me. And uh, to everyone else who's just enjoying these videos, I love having you with you. Stick your comments down there, I love to read them. I do my best to reply to all of them. In the meantime, take it easy. Bye for now.